In this video, we are going to be focusing on the details of dusting. In modern cleaning, you can clean more in less time if you know the correct methods and practice them until you become good at them. The first thing you should remember before you start cleaning any room is that you're working from top to bottom, left to right, and back to front. So, for example, you're just going to be working from the top of the room to the bottom, from the left of the room to the right, and for this example, we're going to be cleaning from the back of the counter to the front of the counter. Now to actually clean the dust, you're going to want to do more than just dramatically blow on the area you want to clean. So that's why we use the blue microfiber towel. You just want to make sure to check the fibers for anything hard that may scratch surfaces before you use it. Blue microfiber cloths are used to dust dry rooms. Now if your instructions specify for a dry dust, then just use the cloth dry. Other than that, you can slightly dampen the cloth to pick up more dust. Just make sure that the cloth is slightly damp, because remember, wood should never be wet. Now there may be some instances where a customer might want you to use their own dusting product, in which case you would apply it sparingly to a red shop towel. But remember, only use it sparingly, because using too much polish can cause smears, which are very difficult to buff out. If you're dusting wood with rough sections or splinters, a blue microfiber towel will snag. So, instead, you want to use a vacuum with a soft brush attachment. When dusting with a cloth, you want to make sure you utilize every clean part of the cloth before switching to a new one. That's why you want to keep an ample supply of dusting cloths in your apron, so that you can easily grab a new cloth once the old one is completely dirty. Here are a few important guidelines in order to avoid most accidents. First, and most importantly, you want to pay attention to what's in front of you. Secondly, you want to dust with both hands, especially if you're handling anything that's top-heavy, irreplaceable, or consists of more than one piece. Thirdly, you don't want to slide anything across the surface of any furniture, especially if it's heavy, because then it'll cause scratches. Lastly, do not slide objects such as lamps or knickknacks to dust them. You either want to lift or tip them to dust under or around them. You want to start with dusting the hide parts of the room. In order to do this, you want to use a polywood duster. These are used to dust drapes, window toppers, blinds, and shutters before moving on to the lower parts of the room. When dusting blinds, we're going to use our pattern of dusting from top to bottom and left to right. When you're done with one side, you want to flip it to the other side and repeat the same motions that you did on the first one. Top to bottom, left to right. You then want to pull up the blinds in order to clean the window sashes and the sills just as it is demonstrated in the video. Lastly, you want to always remember to put the blinds back in their original positions. While dusting shutters, you want to make sure not to use the bar to move the blades, because the bar can easily break. Instead, you want to control the shutters with one blade while you're moving them around to dust. When you're dusting flat surfaces, you want to use gentle oval motions. And in the case of the video here, if you're dusting wood, you want your oval motions to go with the grain of the wood. You then use a slight downward pressure to wipe the dust off of the furniture. You also want to remember to fold the used portion of the towel once it shows dirt accumulating. You only want to use a clean and dry blue cloth whenever you're dusting lampshades. You can then dampen a different blue cloth in order to clean the base of the lamp. This video demonstrates how to correctly clean the base of a lamp. This technician does a very good job of getting every nook and cranny of the base, especially at the top and the bottom near the legs. She also does a very good job of picking up each leg of the lamp to clean under and around it instead of dragging it across the table. When we're cleaning wood that adjoins upholstery, such as the couch in the picture, you want to take care not to ruin the upholstery with dirty cloths. That's why you want to make sure you use a clean cloth or turn to a clean section of your cloth when you're cleaning it. For couches and other upholstered furniture, the cleaning strategy used varies greatly on the fabric. 
Hopefully, the only thing you'll need is a quick wipe with the whisk broom, but on the other hand, you may have fabric that wants to cling to hair. To clean with the whisk broom, we're going to use our special method of, I'm sure you know it by now, top to bottom and left to right. You're just going to whisk the crumbs and hairs from the top, back, and sides of the couch. You want to whisk down to the cushion, lift the cushion, and then whisk all hair and debris off of the couch and onto the floor. You then do this with the next section of the couch with the exact same strategy. To dust plants, you're going to need a cloth dampened with deionized water, but the technique to actually cleaning is still the same, top to bottom. The only difference is you're going to need to hold and support the leaf so the stems don't break while you're dusting. If there is a large and heavy plant next to the wall, use your dusting cloth to dust the floor around and behind the plant where the vacuum can't reach. When dusting bookshelves, you first want to try to dust off the tops of the books if there's enough room on the bookshelf. You then gently lift up the spines of the books with one hand while fitting the cloth underneath it with the other hand. As you're moving from, you guessed it, left to right. This motion prevents a line of dust from accumulating along the spines of the books. When dusting shelves, you always want to move back to front and left to right, as always. And for shelves that are densely populated like the one in the video, you want to start by moving the object to the right or in a stable place, cleaning the area where the item used to be, and then cleaning the item itself before putting it back in its original position. You want to be careful with shelves like these because they're often the scenes for most dusting accidents. For TVs, screens, and stereos, you want to use a dry green microfiber cloth with one wet corner. You use this wet corner to clean off fingerprints and then you use the dry part to wipe it off. For desks, you want to tidy papers into piles, but don't move the papers too far from their place of origin. Never spray directly on pictures and mirrors. The liquid could wick up behind the glass and either damage the back of the mirror or the picture behind the glass. You want to clean pictures and mirrors by spraying your cleaner on a blue microfiber cloth and making sure it's only slightly damp before using it. To actually clean the windows and the mirrors, you want to stabilize the frame with one hand while dusting it with the other. This prevents scratches on the walls. To prevent leaving dirt streaks on the wall, don't let the cloth touch the wall while you're cleaning the top of the frame. Dust door panels and trim with the damp cloth. Then, on another cloth, use all-purpose cleaner to clean the fingerprints off the doorknob. Now here are things that are just often overlooked while dusting. We have window sills and molding on window panes, baseboards, chandelier and pot rack chains, hanging light fixtures, especially the bulbs, bulbs and table lamps and inside the surfaces of shades, telephones, plants, backs of chairs, carved feet of chairs and tables, cross beams underneath tables and chairs, heater and exhaust vents, tops of drawers, cabinet doors and drawer pulls, tops of books on shelves, bottom shelves of anything but especially end tables and coffee tables, areas around electrical cords that trap circulating dust, the tops of drapes, louvered shutters and doors, and TV screens. And that's all you need to know to master the details of dusting.